You ever have one of those wait what moments when things just don't seem to make sense? I have a friend who has those two or three times a day and we always seem to laugh when she says, wait what? But when the idea first came to use the third day, talking about resurrection stories during Lent, I had a, a wait what? The, that just doesn't make sense. But having read the book and, and unpacking these stories, I'm really glad we did. Remember, Mary Magdalene's story was about our lowest and darkest moments and how the power of resurrection overcomes those moments with God's light and a new beginning. Peter discovered there's no failure so big the resurrection can't overcome it. And last week, we discovered that doubts aren't the enemy of faith, that indeed, if we don't sweep our doubts under the rug, if we, we bring them out in the open, it, it actually helps, helps us to deepen our faith. Because when we can be honest with God, there's nothing that can keep us from really understanding the depth of God's grace and what it is we're truly able to believe in. So now we come to two travelers on the road to Emmaus. Reminds me of a time we were traveling home uh, from college. It's oh dark 30, I mean, middle of the night, winter time. Trying to get home for Christmas, counting the miles, the moments till we arrive. Boom, we get a flat tire on the side of I-81 in the middle of no daggum wear. You ever had something like that happen? You run out of gas or the car breaks down in the middle of nowhere and you're running late? Well, the spare didn't fit. I won't tell you the rest of the story, but the good news is we did get home. But for that moment when the spare didn't fit, now what? Are we ever going to get home? It's cold. Where are we going to find help at 3 o'clock in the morning? So when we get to the story of the two travelers on the road to Emmaus, we've got to recognize the roller coaster ride that followers of Jesus had that week from the immensely wonderful entry into Jerusalem. People cry, crying aloud, Hosanna. The, the powerful cleansing of the temple. Um, the sense that maybe this Passover, Jesus would indeed be the culmination of all the hopes and dreams. Instead, He's arrested, beaten, flogged, publicly humiliated, or whatever the right word is for this kangaroo court. Then he's crucified. He's dead. Sealed in a tomb with Roman soldiers guarding for fear that disciples would come and steal the body and start a lie. These two travelers to Emmaus who had been most likely part of the 70 traveling home and you can hear it in their language we had hoped. We've all had those we had hope moments. We had hoped the cancer treatment but it didn't. The marriage counseling, but it didn't. The person who reveals to family they are gay and gets shunned. Hope stashed.
There's a stranger that walks with them. Are you the only person in Jerusalem that doesn't know what happened? You know, dashed hopes and disappointment can really cloud our vision. I came home for lunch two days ago. Got the soup started and began to eat and was looking around for our cat. Only to find out that somewhere between breakfast and his beautiful meowing, uh, encouraging us to get his breakfast right now, he passed away. In the last day or two, it's been odd not to have my little buddy around, climbing in my lap, demanding uh, that I give him some, some love and petting. That discombobulation they were expressing, how could you not know what was going on and how our hopes have been dashed, how our grief is overcoming us. And yet as this stranger unpacked the scriptures, they will later say, weren't our hearts strangely warmed by his teaching? You know, we can be so overcome with our despair and our brokenness that we can't see the forest from the trees. But what happens is something very familiar happens. That fourfold motion that Jesus takes, the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it. And in that very familiar thing that Jesus did with the bread at the 5,000 feeding, at the 4,000 feeding, at the meals where he shared with his disciples in the upper room, the blessing, this practice of giving thanks, blessing, breaking, and giving, they recognized it was Jesus. Their eyes were opened. Their dashed hopes were renewed. Sometimes that's exactly what we need. Is to go through the routines of faith. The prayers. The worship. The confessions. Sometimes it's hard to do those things. Sometimes we need others around us to confess for us, to pray for us, because we're hurting that much. But it's in those normal rhythms of our faith that the Spirit comes to us and opens our eyes and warms our heart and we see again that, yes, what we had hoped can still be hoped for. And so wherever you are in your hopes, in your grieving, in your wandering, in your hurt, know that Christ is walking with you on the way, wanting to share with you God's good news. And once again, take, bless, and break the word of life and give it to you. So wherever you find despair, broken hopes and dreams, give them to Jesus. And let's see what happens when the one who died and rose again takes hold of our broken dreams, our dashed hopes, and breathes them to them the breath of life. That's the good news for today. That the resurrection comes to us in our broken moments, our despair, our dashed hopes, to remind us that hope in God is never dashed.
never over. For there's always resurrection. Go with that hope and peace. Walk with Christ. Amen.